Hello guys, welcome back to Custom Gamer. My name is Daz, and this is the show where we talk about level design while playing cool maps. Sorry it's been so long coming, but here is part two of Triage by the Triage mod team. Now, uh, in part one, we had a look at all the gameplay elements that made up this mod. Uh, part two, things get a little bit more interesting. There's some more varied scenarios uh, as the mod goes on, which is nice. While some of the fights in the part one were quite interesting, uh, they did tend to feel quite samey after a while. Part two has a lot more variety in that regard. It still kind of falls into some of the same traps though, I think. Uh, for instance, this fight here, you've got kind of a uh, your friendly guys on the left and the enemy on the right. But there's no real flanking routes again. This is something I mentioned a lot in part one. It's like all, all the kind of game spaces are extremely linear, which is a real shame. While they are still quite fun to play, at pretty much every single fight in the mod I was just kind of really wishing that I could outflank the enemy. Especially in a building like this where they've got a lot of cover from the front, it's really hard to pick off the final few guys in there. It would be really nice if you could go around the side and perhaps up some stairs and attack them from behind. The scripting here isn't particularly transparent either. The, the whole event doesn't really stop until we kill the very last combined soldier and then, you know, as soon as he dies, it's instantly you get text uh, and voice telling you that the area is complete. Thank you, thanks for your help. If you're heading to HQ, we'll come with you. We'll leave through the back. So, in terms of visuals, uh, the second half of the mod does feel a lot better than the first. The maps tend to be at least as detailed, but mostly it's kind of above par. Uh, this area is a nice example of that. You've got some nice uh, detailing on the walls here. Everything feels slightly less boxy, although still there's room for improvement, I think. It's simple things really, like uh, different colours in all of the buildings. Uh, in part one there was a lot of buildings down streets and they were all the same colour, kind of that you know, that kind of faded white concrete. At least here you've got you've got different shades of you know, different plaster and concrete and variation in all the materials. Uh, even little simple things like that can help make the level look a lot better. It does look very artificial when everything's made out of the same uh, material. So this area does feel slightly more non-linear than the rest of the mod. Uh, you've got combine in various different buildings and uh, you kind of clear them out as you go. But you can kind of, you know, you can ignore a couple of buildings if you want. It's not a very good idea, but you can. It's nice that the option's there. I've got to say, I really like the Magnum in this mod, they really uh, got the Magnum just right. It feels fantastic to use. So here we've got a new scenario involving zombies, and that there's some interesting changes made to the zombies in this mod. Uh, they generally move a lot faster than they do in 
stock Half-Life 2. Uh, these, ch these changes were made for a couple of reasons. Uh, I recommend you listen to the audio interview on Planet Philip with uh, the author of this mod, uh, Wilson C. He goes, it talks about a lot of the changes made to the AI. Uh, it's really interesting to listen to it. Uh, I do recommend you go and have a look if you're interested in AI changes and why they were made and all this kind of stuff. Uh, basically through testing they just found that the zombies didn't really work with this new style of uh, you know gameplay. I don't dream anymore. They weren't really a threat to the player. With, it was mostly due to the fact that the guns were a lot more deadly so it was just so much easier to pick off zombies uh, from a distance as they shambled towards you. So they made them move a lot faster. Now, you'll notice here I'm, I'm a bit lost in this part of the video because again it's another section where you really need a flashlight to find the way forwards and this is the uh, the most obvious section in the mod where the fact that you don't have a flashlight actually hurts the gameplay a lot. Sorry. So I was looking around for ages here and it's only because I spotted a, a little shaft of light at the end of this corridor that I actually found this way through here. Yeah that's really really bad. And <laughs> yeah, again, some, some AI teething issues. There seems to be quite a few of them in this map. But you notice at the start, I had a, the woman holding her head and just firing into the air. And various things like this. There's, yeah, this is a couple of issues. Luckily, none, none of them really get in the way of gameplay. It's just kind of hilarious uh, problems here. This is another area that could have really done with a torch. Luckily that there are kind of flares and things like that to kind of guide you around. Pardon me. Yeah, I, I just think these all these areas would probably look a hell of a lot better for just being like a really dim kind of fill light used in these areas so everything wasn't so pitch black. There's an area at the end of this so you get into a huge fight with the combine and uh, it's so dark you can barely even see your targets. It's a shame because it would be quite a good fight otherwise. There's some variations on the weapons as you can see here. I've got the uh, SMG with a silencer on the front. Uh, I'm not sure if there's any kind of mechanical differences, but uh, it's, it's just nice to have a bit of variation, I suppose. So this is the area I'm talking about. It's, it's a nice setup. You've got lots of pillars you can use for cover. Um, You've got kind of this central shaft in the middle, which is basically death. <laughs> this area does a, a nice job of just forcing you to take quick peeks out, taking out a couple of guys and then getting back behind cover before you take a bunch of damage, and slowly moving up behind the pillars. Uh, gives a nice kind of effect of slowly encroaching on a, a defended position. It's just so dark, you can, you can barely see what to shoot at. It's a, it's a real shame basically aim for the kind of green glowing eyes in, in the sea of blackness in front of you. maybe a couple of low cover objects in the middle of the room just to kind of break up that huge corridor of death would have been quite interesting give you a few more tactical options perhaps some uh, objects down the side passages as well just to make moving up a little bit easier because you really are just kind of stuck behind all these pillars would have been nice to perhaps have things like uh, fallen girders or you know little bits of machinery or something that you could get behind 
As it is, it's probably one of my favourite areas in the mod. It's just, again, it's just a shame it's so damn dark. You can barely see what you're shooting at. That was a nice uh, level change transition. It was uh, very seamless, it felt good. This section is really fun as well. You've got um, limitless amounts of zombies that just constantly rise up from the water. I, I believe it's infinite. If you stay here, I think they'll just keep on coming. While that might feel a bit strange, uh, I, I think the the gameplay here is really fun, so I think it's worth the trade-off. It basically forces you to move forward, otherwise you're eventually going to run out of ammo. That's a nice bit of suspense to the gameplay, where... You're just hoping that the zombie doesn't come out of the water right next to you as you're moving forwards. It's nice as well, because you get a nice bit of anticipation, but they don't just come up and hit, hit you instantly kind of see them rise up so you have a second or two to react. It's really nice. And as you start losing uh, allies, they start getting more and more dangerous. So again, it's, it's another mechanic of uh, the longer you stay, the more dangerous things get. I really enjoyed this area. Got a couple of you guys helping up there. Wasn't quite sure if they were my, if they were helping or not. So, a couple of erroneous shots, but never mind. Quick dash for ammo. Perhaps would have been made slightly more interesting with the addition of a couple of extra uh, zombines. I think there was, there was one at the beginning and then I can't remember seeing any others, but it just would have varied it up that just that little extra bit, used sparingly, of course. Maybe a poison head crab or something <laughs> if you if you were feeling really evil. Hey, we were waiting for you guys. We'll come with you. So let's have a look at the AK-47. This gun seems to be um, sort of, you know, high-powered shot, but a lot of recoil. I know I talked about this a bit in part one, but um, the weapons do feel really, really good. They did an excellent job with kind of the handling. But then down sights, it gives you a lot of opportunities to kind of uh, make weapons feel different. Even though essentially they're all the same thing, kind of hit scan, hit scan free aim weapons. But there's a lot of opportunities with things like recoil patterns and, uh, you know, first shot recoil. Um, hip fire accuracy, all these different things which games like Battlefield and Planet Side use to balance out all their weapons. You get a lot of choice with how you want weapons to feel. It's, it's very easy to make them feel horrible, but they've done an excellent job in this mod. Like I mentioned in part one, the only problem I really have with the weapons is that the, the iron sights on the combine rifle are just absolutely awful. <laughs> you basically can't see anything. 
I saw some comments on, I think it was on ModDB, um, people saying that the sound effects were just way too loud and kind of reverby. I actually really like them. Perhaps they are a tad loud, you could lower them by a couple of decibels. I've noticed I've had to lower the volume on these videos a lot, otherwise you couldn't, you couldn't hear my, uh, you couldn't hear my commentary. <laughs> But I, I think the, the actual sound effects themselves are good. I really like it. Now here we've got the addition of combined soldiers, zombies and your friendly ally soldiers. Although they are kind of stuck well behind me at the moment. But again, this is another variation on the gameplay, so now you've got two things to worry about rather than just a single set of enemies. Uh, for the most part this, this area is actually really fun. Uh, there's a couple of instances uh, you'll see in a moment where things just get a little bit too crazy. And, uh, so these com kind of combine in place machine guns around the corner here are very very nasty to deal with. So you notice here you've got these two in place guns at the top here and there. They deplete your health really, really fast. It's quite nasty again, taking cover and then having a zombie pop up next to you. So it's great. I think they, they've just about got it right. Um, it just feels slightly punishing in some situations. It's mostly the fact that you pop out to take a shot at the uh, the operator of the machine gun and he just instantly takes you down to kind of, you know, red red screen, get the hell back in cover. I think what it is is perhaps just the um, the cone of fire accuracy on the machine guns is perhaps just a little bit too good. <laughs> Dancing to the sound of my own heartbeat. I've heard it a little bit too much in this section, I think. You notice the repeating dialogue here. This is a, a kind of common issue in this mod where if they're waiting for you to press a button or something, they, the text that gets you to go over to the button is uh, repeated far too often, I think. And I don't think there's enough variations on it either. It feels very robotic. So I like this area for a couple of reasons, so you can use the turret like I am here. Uh, on my first playthrough of the mod I actually didn't use the turret at all and just kind of sat at the back next to the door with my AK just mowing down all these guys as they came in. <laughs> that was actually a really fun way to play this bit because there were so many zombies by the end I was just kind of running around throwing grenades at them. It was actually really really fun. Even using the in place gun here you eventually do get overrun and flanked so yeah, this is a really fun fight. I think it's over perhaps a little bit too quickly. It would have been really nice to have a, a situation where you're on the defence and the enemies are coming to you. That's perhaps the one thing this uh, this mod lacks past the intro, of course, is a uh, an area where you're, you're the defenders and the combine are attacking or, you know, zombies or anything like that. You? 
This is another area where I was cursing at the lack of a flashlight. Especially th this area is really bad for it actually because you've got a whole bunch of enemies in there trying to shoot you. You just can't see them. This is another area where it's very hard to find the way out. Because it's just so dark. Yeah, it's strange here. There's a lot of lighting in these indoor areas that just feel very strange. It's like they're using linear uh, fall off on the lights rather than the uh, quadratic that's the default in Half-Life 2. You notice a lot of the lights in here, they don't illuminate much of the surroundings past their uh, initial drop-off distance. I'm not sure if that's the case or not, or whether it's just a funky uh, visual effect. Perhaps something to do with the tone mapping or something in this area. But yeah, the light just feels extremely localised compared to what uh, Half-Life 2 normally puts out. Now this area really didn't make a lot of sense to me, although it's really creepy. <laughs> Again, it's too dark here, you can't find the way up into the door really. Need some illumination on those stairs. Yeah, this area is a brilliant bit of atmosphere. I like the way the spotlight kind of picks out this thing on the floor. I was waiting for it to get up and attack me, but the fact that it doesn't makes it even more scary because it's, it's just this guy convulsing here with strange noises. Yeah, it's uh, really creepy stuff. And that just about brings us to the end. So I think my, my biggest criticism of triage is that just the level design is too linear to to really support the gameplay they've got here. I mean, the gameplay is fun, but I just think it could have been even better with just some some more choices in how you attack enemies, given by the level design. Uh, there's just too many linear areas where you're just forced into kind of a choke point gun battle. Did it would have been really nice that? to have flanking routes and have some more options and things like that. Um, it does get better in the second half of the mod with things like the the zombies and the, then you've got these kind of three-way fights with zombies and combine and yourselves and that's where the mod really starts to shine and I think if there'd just been more kind of player choice in areas to go and uh, how to attack situations it would have really lifted the gameplay up even more than it is currently but uh, overall I, I did have fun with this I mean again like I mentioned in part one this, this whole aim down sight kind of gameplay stuff isn't really my cup of tea but I still have a lot of fun in this mod and uh, I'm looking forward to part two of it so I'll see you next time